It's really my great pleasure to welcome all of you here today for the second national summit on the National Academy of Engineering Grand Challenges. They fall in four simple but profound categories. Health, sustainability, vulnerability, and the joy of living. They challenge all of us on the deepest meaning of what it means to be an engineer, technologist, an innovator, and a businessman. Welcome to USC and to this important national summit. I feel very privileged to be holding this literal meeting of the minds. How we respond to these grand challenges will determine if the United States advances or retreats. This is the most exciting era for engineering and science in human history. All the innovation is really coming from here, and it's really changing what's going on around the world. Everything is going to be a little computer in your pocket. In addressing critical issues like climate change, the U.S. must spark an innovation arms race. Innovation comes to play when you say, how can I use it differently? I've got new missions. Um, how can I take that existing system instead of building a new one and innovating? If the old paradigm was defined as more, faster, bigger, more powerful, the new one will be more with less. There also seems to be a growing political sense of global awareness today of the urgency of addressing the grand challenges of global sustainability, health, and security. This is a knowledge age. If we're going to have a vibrant economy, good quality of life, provide jobs to people, science and technology and engineering are at the core of what has to be done. My job, and I argue all of our jobs, is to first extend the excitement of this atmosphere out beyond the confines of our sheltered meccas. But even more importantly, our job is to shift the perception of society towards valuing the engineering profession, and engineers in particular. The 15th grand challenge, and that has to do with our ability to educate the science and engineering workforce for the future. When you enable women and minorities to really understand what they could do with engineering, they get excited about it. Kimberly Parker and her team. The Guatemala Water Project. Where they need a sustainable way to purify their water. When viewed in the light of the sustainability of our planet, the relevance of engineering and science now often takes on an appeal to young people. I suspect it's about committing oneself to a cause that's greater than self-interest, and it's truly inspirational. Science and technology. It's very gratifying for me to see this Grand Challenges Summit turn into what could only be categorized as a national movement. And I'd say this summit is the high point in that movement so far. It is our goal of this summit to probe the connections, advance the conversation, and to further cultivate what I believe is becoming the dominant theme in our times, namely how engineering is empowering society. Well, all of you should be blogging. All of you should be throwing information out to the public, learning to think about your work as something that is engaging to the public and matters to the public, and be able to answer those why questions. I think it's absolutely key to get the information down to a concise form, to be clear about what you're trying to say, and to be clear about why someone should care about what you have to say. The Grand Challenge Scholars together, we could start like a uh, blog to chronicle our experiences. Uh, I really think that's something that we'll do um, in the next, in the upcoming weeks. Any breakthrough idea, any radical idea, the day before it's a breakthrough, it's a crazy idea. In 1961, when we went to the moon and JFK said we're going to go, we had no idea how we were going to get there. But the challenge was so bold that it attracted the right people. And the average age of the engineers who built it were in their late 20s. So next time someone who's in the mid-20s comes up to you with a radical idea, listen. As I've gone into on tour of my like, senior year, thinking ahead, where am I going after I graduate this NAE Grand Challenges program, it's really, really become a valuable experience, it's something I'm very grateful for. I've just spoken to our August leader, Yanis Yorchos. This event will not be the last, and we're going to follow up with something much grander in an international scale. So the grand challenges are going to go international in the Davos style. When other people see problems, we see solutions. When other people have accepted the ways things are, we're looking to how things should be. With all of the intellectual capital in this room today, I have great confidence that we can help turn the grand challenges of today 
into problems of the past. Thank you.